Hello, mic test. We good? We live? Oh, let me check. Uh huh. Yeah, still something wrong with Streamlabs today. Like my wavelength audio is not going to Streamlabs. I'm like, what? <laughs> I guess I should figure it out. But how are y'all doing? Welcome to Saturday. We've all made it again. I'm glad you're here. Um, but yeah, if you're new to this stream, welcome, welcome, welcome. These streams happen every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time. And I talk about no code stuff, mainly Webflow, because again, that's my bread and butter. That's what I've been doing since 2013, and it's been a ride. Um, I'm very grateful and appreciative of all of you who have supported this channel, supported me and this live stream. Because it's fun. It's fun to answer your questions and just see what you all are, are doing. And my whole goal in life, what I've learned, what my whole goal in life now is to help grow people to become better than me. And if you're already better than me, then keep going. <laughs> Don't stop. I'm not the best. I'm not perfect. No one is. But seeing other people grow and helping people grow is is now my passion. And it's fun. It's fun to see people fly. So uh, any way that I can help do that, uh, let me know. Uh, yeah, so who's here in the live chat room right now? Um, first one in the door, Pablo, my community manager and supporting live stream producer <laughs> since jake isn't here thank you so much pablo for being here and helping me out uh demetrius first of all hello to everyone hello to you too norm is here welcome back yes joseph bates is back eli's back ripple effect is back scott citron yes welcome welcome back so hello and happy Saturday. Hello, Nelson and everyone. Haven't shown up to your live streams lately, but I'm always watching the recordings. I'm glad to make it today. Yeah, if you're watching the live, if you're watching live right now, I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Um, if you can't make it to these streams, again, this is on a weekend. You don't have to be here. Just watch the recording. You know, you have a life to live. You have other things to do. You should be resting uh, or, or just hanging out with your family but or doing whatever you want. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching the recording as well. JTEL is back. Susan, hello. Welcome. Joseph, can you explain how to access the community? Do I have to be a part of Circle? Thanks in advance. Joseph, yes. Um, So Circle... Actually, let me show you what circle is. So, circle dot so. So let me explain. If I'm go to my screen here, is my screen working? Yeah, it's working. Okay, cool. So circle is this cool no code way to create. Basically, it's basically a forum. It's like what if forums and Slack and a little bit of like an Instagram, Facebook kind of a feed uh, came together and created a baby. Well, that's Circle. And Circle is also usable through Integromat and um, Zapier, which makes it no code. And it's just so nice. A lot of people, I, I, uh, Mackenzie Child uses Circle. Uh, Rand Seagal uses Circle. Um, there's a lot of people. Yeah, MakerPad uses Circle. Yeah. So there's a lot of no code community members and platforms that use Circle. So what is Circle? It's just a platform for a chat board or forum for your community. And Joseph, to answer your question, you you don't have to be a, uh, a member of Circle. You don't have to pay for Circle. When you join the Pixel Geek community, you're just paying for the membership for the Pixel Geek community, and then Circle, the platform, sends you an invite to it. And that's where I and the rest of the Pixel Geek community members um, hang out in between streams. Um, and if you're not familiar with the community, uh, let me go to it. If you're not familiar with the community and you want to become a member, it's down here. What happened? I clicked on it, but it didn't go down. But anyways, so you get access to become a member and um, 
and whenever someone has questions, that's my first go-to place because I get so many people who are on Instagram DMs, Twitter DMs, um, and different community um, people who are like, hey, how do you do this, Nelson? <laughs> I don't have much time to answer everyone's questions. That's why I do this stream. And if you're not able to ask your question here on the stream, there's still access on the chat board so you can ask me the question there. So me um, and mainly Pablo are there to help with questions about your projects or with web design. And you can even DM me through that chat board. And that's my first priority right there uh, in between streams is to help you guys out on the chat board. Also, uh, every month I get together um, on Google Meet and uh, just talk about the realness of this industry. And if you want to get anything off your chest, if uh, you just want to vent, uh, that's the space. I try to make it a safe space for everyone to learn or just get quick answers. And um, yeah. And then if you do the, the pro membership, you can also, on top of the two hour private coaching, the group session, you get a one-on-one -on -one private coaching with me and I'm happy to, you know, help you through whatever you're working through, whether it be mentally or through a, a project. I want to be there because I have over 25 years experience in web design, over 20 years experience in this industry. And I've been, I feel like I've been through it all. Okay. Not all. Most. Uh, I went through freelancing, then a in-house webmaster, webmaster who uses that title anymore, and then an HTML email developer, and then uh, went through the <laughs> carrot on the stick of asking my boss, hey, I want to be a web designer. Okay, three months later, they hire a web designer, and I'm like, wait, what? The so going through that stress, and then um, being a, a junior web designer at a at a digital agency during the flash days so i can tell you uh, i can tell you about that story and how the recession during that time uh, <laughs> uh made me cry so much because i was like i feel like i'm a failure because i got laid off but you know you know you, you put it on yourself but yeah and then and then i even <laughs> worked for a company that that made Chrome, no, no, browser extensions in order to spam people with ads. Um, and then they got sued by Facebook. <laughs> but at the same time, I was going, I, I already signed off on a new condo with my then fiance, now wife. Uh, and we also signed off at the same time, uh, paid for the DJ for our wedding and, and paid for the church donation for the church and, and got like half of our wedding planning done. And then I had to leave that one. <laughs> yeah. So I've been through a lot of stress and if there's any way I can empathize or show you, uh, tell you stories that can help you through your career, that's what the one-on-one -on -one and the private coach group coaching sessions are for because, um, experiences, stories shouldn't be kept, um, in a box closed, it should be knowledge given to other people so they can learn and step on top of that knowledge and move forward and grow even larger. All right. Um, Joseph, if you're having troubles, uh, getting into the community, uh, yeah, Pablo can help you out. Um, Pablo, if you have Twitter, can you put your Twitter account and maybe Joseph can DM you or something? Yeah. And, and yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about it later, Joseph. Anyways, well, that was a, that was a, <laughs> I went way left field, but yeah, going back to the intro of these streams, uh, hi, yeah, so that's what these streams are about, just teaching Webflow and no-code stuff. Oh, where did I go? <laughs> All right, um, today's topic, let me see here, who submitted, so thank you to... Where is it? Where's the notes? How do I use ClickUp? Okay, thank you to Jose for submitting this one. And if you have an idea that you want to submit, a future idea for a stream topic, 
uh, go to pixelgeek.community slash ideas. Um, let me see here. Or slash live streams. Yeah. Oh, cool. So Jake made this. So live streams right here. If you want to vote for the next idea, just go to pixelgeek.community slash live streams and you can vote. If you're a member, if you're a paying member of the community, there's a separate um, voting board where your votes get more weight, has more weight uh, than the public votes. All right. So, yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, and then you can submit your stream ideas here. Yay. Jake is awesome. He made all of this. And he made all the uh, automations behind it. This is the stuff he loves to do, automation and no code stuff with ClickUp and Zap, or no, Integromat. Yeah, that's his jam. So check it out. Go ahead and vote. And that's why, um, oh, it was Jose. It says Richard. Oh, we got that mixed up. Oh, we're all... Oh, <laughs> Pablo, sorry. I sent you the wrong... <laughs> Whoops, I sent you the wrong uh, ClickUp link, but yeah. Whoopsie. Hold on. How come that one... Ready for street? Oh, sh Sorry, I'm, I'm doing stuff in the background real quick because I'm, I messed up. There we go. Hold on, let me send this to Pablo. That's the one, sorry. Whoops. Okay, cool. Ready for stream. Okay, cool. Anyways, this is what uh, Jake made. And so today's stream is right here, submitted by Richard. Uh, image switching based on X and Y mouse movement, all right? And this is the website he referred us to. And so right here, if you just move your mouse left to right on this website, it changes images. And so this is pretty easy to do. Oh, hi, thank you. So this is pretty easy to do, and I feel like this is going to be a short stream because I can explain this in less than 10 minutes and probably build it in less than 15 minutes. And we may have a lot more time uh, to review your websites or answer any questions you have about Webflow and web design or career. And yeah, so before I get into that, I usually have like a deep thought of the week and today's deep thought I wanted to talk about and it started when I saw a billboard over the, um, just yesterday I saw a billboard um, in San Diego so I'm driving down the road and then it says in big letters just there's just four uh, just three words on this billboard and it's just it says, the best, exclamation point, Barona Casino. Okay, that's four words, but whatever. The best, Barona Casino, All right? I'm not advertising for them. I'm just saying what I've, I've seen. There's no pictures of uh, people. It's just a, some sort of graphical background, but with large text, the best, Barona Casino. But then the billboard right after that says the same exact thing, the best, Barona Casino. And then a third billboard right after that was the same exact thing. And I'm like, why are you overcompensating? Why do you have to scream at people to say the best three times? And then I got into just deep thought as I'm driving. I'm like, man, they think they're perfect, huh? They think... They're the best that they have to say it three times. They're probably overcompensating or just very lazy with their marketing. And so it makes me think about like how easy it is nowadays, especially with technology, how it's easy to be fake and it's really hard to be real. 
all right? Real and honest. Uh, what I mean is, like, if you go look at social media, Instagram filters, uh, clickbait headlines slash titles, even deep fakes, you know, that are, like, there's apps that let you put your face on a another actor's face and replace, and then, like, I mean, it, it's just getting easier and easier for people to edit their photos or edit their content or even yeah even photos or videos or any type of content on the internet edit it to the point where it's perfect and um when it comes to you know when it comes to perfection even it says on my website like i i'm not i'm not a fan of perfection yeah like perfectionism or people faking that they're perfect it, like, I don't know, it, it gets to me. And it's getting harder and harder in this world where, uh, to be real, when people expect perfection. I don't expect perfection. I, In fact, I like it when people aren't perfect. I'm more attracted to those type of people in wanting to talk to them than the ones that show up as perfect. Like, nothing in this world, or even universe, is perfect. Think about it. Think about it. Like, the number, the number pi, the circumference of a circle, right? It is the most perfect number to explain a circle, right? Yet, if you think about it, <laughs> the number pi, it's a decimal that goes on and on and on forever, which makes it not perfect. So the perfect number is imperfect. And I also think about, like, I know of some couples that, like, overcompensate just like that billboard. Like, oh, our relationship is so perfect. And then they always got to express that so much. And the only photos you see... Um, and messages you see from from them are perfect photos, perfect family photos of like everything in our life is perfect. We're we're our relationship is so perfect. We were meant to be. And learning from my relationship with my wife, we're not perfect. And a relationship is hard to to keep together. So yeah, it's. It, <laughs> Perfection. Perfection. I, I don't get it. And you know what? In my opinion, stop trying to be perfect. Just be you, which is imperfect, which is perfect. Okay, <laughs> I'm done with that. All that went through my head from a billboard. All right. Well, three billboards. All right. So, yeah. Um, before we get into the tutorial, again, thank you to Pablo for linking it, but if you want to refer people into the Pixel Geek community, there's an affiliate link there, and, um, you get a cut of the, of the, um, membership fee if you bring someone in, All right? Uh, and if you have an idea for a future stream, go vote on it or submit it. All right, Ricky Beats, thank you. I actually really needed that. Yay! I'm glad. I'm glad. But it's got you talking about it, so it seems like it's done its job. Dang it! They got me! Dang you, Barona Casino! But then again, society loves to watch a train wreck. We, we, it's in our nature to stare and be like, ooh, what is, what is that? What is that? I mean, look at reality TV and how much money it's made. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, this is not a perfect stream. I fail all the time. But that's why you're all watching, right? Because you want to see me fail. <laughs> all right. Let's get into the topic. And yeah, let me know if you have any other thoughts about perfectionism. And Ricky, if you want to elaborate more on that, like... Um, why did that message just now help you out? All right, so, numbered studio. Wait, let me go back to my other computer. There we go. 
All right, numbered studio. So this is going to be really quick. Pablo, start the clip right here. So numbered.studio, the hero row on the X axis changes images. In my honest opinion, when I first looked at this website, I was like, what is Richard talking about? I don't, I don't know. I just went to scroll down. I was like, which section is he talking about? Like, I don't get it. And it wasn't until I accidentally moved, well, I mean, not accidentally, I just randomly moved my mouse to the left. And I was like, whoa, what, what just happened? What, what just happened? And then I was like, oh, I get it. So in my opinion, this user experience right here, where it made me jump or go or get surprised, I was like, yeah, that's not good. You gotta tell people, hey, if you hover over something, something's gonna happen. So um, first we're going to create this interaction. And then second, we're going to explore ways, maybe explore one way to maybe fix the user experience so it's not jarring to the point where you're like, oh my God, this changed. That scared me. If you have any ideas already, um, let me know once I'm done with the first tutorial because I want to know your opinion. I have an idea, but I'm still not sure if it's the best user experience. Okay, so let's get to it. So only thing I did on this blank project is upload four space photos from Unsplash. That's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a hero row. I'm going to drag in a section. And this section right here, I'm just going to call it hero. Is my zoom working? Yes. I'm going to call it hero. I'm going to give it a height of 100 VH, which means viewport height. I do not know why Webflow gives it a padding of 7575, because that's actually false. Yeah, there is no padding of 7575. It's just height 100 VH. Man, why can't Webflow be perfect? <laughs> Anyways, just kidding. All right, so we have that hero. And now we need to overlay. We need to stack photos on top of each other. And there's two, way to, two ways to do that. I'm thinking we'll just go with the CSS position way because there's you can do CSS position using relative and absolute to stack things on top of each other or you can do CSS grid where you just make all of the images uh, set to position manual I mean um, float and uh, manual and that way you can stack them on top of each other so we'll do actually I can show you both yeah it's an education stream so let me show you the CSS position way to stack photos on top of each other. So let's go ahead and do that. So right here in position, oh gosh, there. Position, we're gonna set it to relative because the images inside of it are going to have position absolute. So it needs something to relate to, hence relative. All right. And so let's drag in our first image of space. Is that broken? How come I, there it goes. Took a while for it to load. All right, so we're gonna call this image one. Actually, no, sorry. I'm gonna give it a selector of image. Okay, so it has a, a class name of image and I'm going to set that as position absolute. I'm gonna set it to the Let's set it to, let's set it to, yeah, top left, okay? And let's also make sure that the width and height are 100 VW for full viewport width and 100 VH for full viewport height. And because we may get some skewedness because we're setting the size and height, let's make sure that this fit is set to cover. Cover. Bam. Okay. 
So there we go, we got our first one. And so with this, I'm going to set a combo class of number one. The reason why is because all the images are going to use this first parent selector and we'll have all of those um, CSS properties that I've set. The only difference between the four is the Z index. So Z index for this, this one's just gonna be on the very bottom. So I could just leave it alone or set it at zero. The default is zero or auto. So you don't, have, you don't really have to set it, but if you want, you can, it's up to you. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. Cool. All right, next, let's copy and paste this. And then for this, I'm going to just click here, delete it and add a number two. And number two, I'm going to give it a Z index of two, which is higher than zero. So that means this is stacked on top of the other one. And let's double click it and replace the image with the next one. And there we go. So if I hide number two, display none, it shows number one. If I remove that, it shows number two. So we're good. So now let's just copy and paste again. Delete number two, add number three, Z index of three. Double click, change the image. And there we go. One more time. Copy, paste, change number four, Z index number four, double click, change the image to the fourth one, and there we go. All right, so we have four images stacked on top of each other. Okay, now let's turn off number four, three, and two. So when I mean turn off, I'm talking about display none, okay? So now if I click anywhere, it's clicking on image number one. It's not clicking on anything else. Even if I preview, it's only showing the first image. Cool, cool. Now let's go ahead and um, add our interaction. So we're gonna add an interaction to hero. Our elements, our structure is done. Let's go to our hero right here go to our lightning bolt interactions element trigger mouse move over element clicky clicky on mouse move play mouse animation now we don't have any mouse animations created so we're going to create a new one plus and here we go so if you're not familiar with mouse move over elements Here's a very basic tutorial. You have your X and Y, okay? So what happens when your mouse moves on the horizontal axis, uh, axis, axis, um, AKA X, okay? And what happens on Y? And you notice that you have percentages here. So the percentages means X 0% is all the way to the left of the canvas, X 100% is always to the right. And for Y, for web design, it starts at the top. So zero is up here. 100 is down here. Okay. So let's go ahead and wait. I think I messed up. Yeah, I messed up. Okay, we're not gonna use a mouse move interaction. We're just gonna use a hover. My bad, my bad, all right. Let me delete this. If you're watching recording, yeah, um, yeah, this is not, <laughs> don't do that, <laughs> don't do that. Don't set a trigger on hero. We're going to actually create four columns. Okay, we're gonna create four invisible columns. So that way when you hover over one column, it shows image one, it, and then you hover over another one, it shows image two and, and turns off one and so forth. Ooh, this just got a little bit harder in my head. Um, okay, and someone might 
come up with a better way to do this, but we'll see. All right, let's make one more. Yeah, we have to make a couple more elements, so we're not done with the structure. So I need to overlay with four invisible columns that will be the triggers, the hover triggers. So here we go. I'm going to Command or Control E inside of Hero and type in Div and press Return. And let's call this um, uh, Hover Columns Wrapper. You can use a mouse move animation and just change the opacity of every image. Wait. Uh, is that better? Is that better? I think it is. I think it is. Web Desire is probably right. And wait, is this Web Desire, Webflow Web Desire? If he's who I'm thinking he is, then. I'm like, welcome to the stream. No, not you. What's there's a there's a person on Webflow who does awesome animations. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I'll look for you later. Unless, yeah, I'll look for you later. Anyways, I go back and forth in these in my head. Yeah, I think web, web desire is right. So let's go back to hero and do mouse move over element and just continue doing what I was doing. All right, so on the, we're only gonna play with X. So on 0%, on 0%, we need to set something to opacity. Uh, okay, 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 let me get this. So image one, Image one, so opacity will be 100. No, I don't want the calendar, Windows. Image one, I want 100%. And here, I'm gonna set this to 100% as well. But the keyframe, so, okay, okay. Keyframe is gonna be 20. Oh no, no, 25. Because a quarter of 100 is 25, yeah. All right. I hope I'm doing this right. And this is and this is affecting image one. And then I'm going to click on image two when you set their display property. Ah, so I need to show image two. Okay, so on twenty six percent. Image one is going to have opacity of zero. Okay. Okay. I think I'm doing this right. And at the same time, image two is going to have opacity of 100. And then I'm going to do the same thing on 50 for image two. Look at me who said, oh, this is going to be an easy stream. And in my head, I'm second guessing myself. Okay. Okay, Nelson. You think you're all good and badass. <laughs> all right. And then we'll do another one with 51, opacity zero. All right. Let's test that out first. Because again, I'm second guessing myself. Let me delete all of these. This actually. <laughs> uh Okay, so let's see here. So we did this half, the left half. Okay. And my battery's running out. Come on. Come on, stream. Where's my charging cable? Was that my mouse or my keyboard? It's my keyboard. Okay, there we go. All right, the interaction you were describing could be used to create those annoying last minute pop-ups, I assume. Uh, maybe, okay, this isn't work. I don't, I don't know if, if this one is the right move, uh, Web Desire or Jacob. 
because this art, this interaction already looks kind of confusing, and it's not working. Like, where's the first image? So that means this one has to start at, at zero. Come on. I don't know about this. It does have... Yeah. I... Yeah. <laughs> Set different Z index. I did. Uh, I already did that. Web desire. I did that. Yeah, this is not gonna fly. I'm gonna go with the four columns thing. Because look how complicated this. I, I'm. I want to make the interactions uh, reusable and not confusing. Because look how confusing this is already. <laughs> um. And yes, the pros of Webflow can like easily figure this out, relative easily, but um, already it's just looking like a mess. I'm getting anxiety just looking at it. Like, whoa! I don't like it. I'll save this interaction, but I'll delete the trigger, and we'll come back to it. <laughs> Going back and forth. Oh, see, this is why you watch these streams to see me fail, right? <laughs> All right, let me try to figure it out before I even start talking like I know what I'm doing. Um, how, what do they call it? Hover trigger uh, wrapper. I'm going to set this to 100. Actually, no, I'm going to set it to position absolute. Give it a full. And Z index of 10, so it's on top of everything, and then give it flexbox, so that way I can um, create four equal columns just by adding four divs. So I'm going to add one div and call this uh, uh, hover trigger, and there we go. And the hover trigger is going to be expanded. I'm going to be there. You go. So I copy and pasted three times, so I can have uh four hover triggers all right so hover trigger number one shows number one so this is what i was thinking oh, not tap hover trigger so on hover start animation i'm going to call this um it could be done with mouse move but it'll take a lot of steps yeah that's what i'm trying to stop Pablo, I, I want to make this more simple. Yeah, as best as we can. I don't know. And this could be the wrong way, too. This could be a very exploratory stream. Um, I'll call it image one. So what I'm going to do is turn off, uh, a turn on image. So let's see if this, this can do this. So I'm going to click on image and give it a hide show of display block. And yeah, save. Okay, let me try that. All right, and let me turn this one off. So let's see, will it work? Okay, it did work. So my mouse is here, if I go here, it shows it. All right, nice, nice. Now, on hover out, start animation. I'm gonna duplicate image one and call it image one off. And I'm gonna do display none, save, on, off. See, much easier than the mouse X. That's it. And now we just rinse and repeat for the rest. Ha. Ha ha. Let's rename this to on. Okay, cool. So I'll, I'll redo this from scratch once um, this is done. 
So what I'm going to do is ho hover trigger is mouse hover, start animation. And again, what I mean by rinse and repeat, uh, making it easier for people to create new ones or edit it is rather than having everything all in one interaction timeline and getting com confusing and weird, um, you can just click the kebab menu and click duplicate. And so it's going to say image one on two, but you can just rename it. So I'm going to click it, go to it, and we're going to name it image two on. And I can, if you don't know this, you can right click on an action and change the target. So I'm going to change that target to image number two, and it shows it right here. Save. And then um, for the hover out, oops. For the hover out, I'm going to duplicate the off to off, right click, change target, image, save, and let's check it out. So we're all the way into the right, nothing's happening. On, off, on. Yeah! See? What if the mouse goes out of screen? Yeah, if it goes out of screen, then the browser doesn't detect the mouse, meaning it's no longer on the canvas, which then triggers the hover out interaction, which is display none. There we go. All right, rinse and repeat. And you know what? Watch this. I'm going to delete those two hover triggers, and what I can do is just copy paste twice. And so even the interactions, as you can see here with the lightning bolt, even the interactions were copied over. So I can just go over to interactions and that saved probably two or three clicks. So right click, uh, click the kebab, duplicate, image three. Pablo, would it be possible for you to edit down this tutorial even more so you can, or should we keep the mess ups? I don't know probably keep the mess up. Image three on, right click, change target, targeting number three. Save, uh, duplicate, call it image three off. Christopher, welcome. I woke up sort of late here. It's all good. This is your weekend. You don't have to be here live. You don't have to be here live. You can watch the recording and it's all good. All right, let's test. One, two, three, off. Wait, why? Oh yeah, because I copied. So there you go. So one more. Right here. Duplicate. Four on. Save. Duplicate for off, right click, change target number four. I don't think I changed the target on the on. Right click, change target off. There we go. One, two, three, four. There you go. Yeah, easier, easier than the mouse move over element and scalable. So that's the thing here. Um, I want to stress this. When you're creating websites for your clients, you're not creating it for yourself. You're creating it for your clients, users, but also for your client if they hire another web developer to come in. You want to make things as scalable as possible, easy enough to understand that a web developer can come in and take over. And again, if someone, if one of your clients are like, hey, I, have so I hired someone else, that's fine. That's fine. Because you've shown that you've made it as clean as possible that anyone can come in 
and you've given that much respect to your clients. If you make your working files or even your Webflow projects confusing or like badly organized, class naming, stru uh, HTML structure or whatnot, you're not helping, you're not helping anyone. All right. You're not even helping yourself because what if the project, the client is like, I love it. Doesn't touch a project for like a year. And then they're like, Hey, we need to make some updates. You go into your project and you're like, what did I even do? <laughs> so you're hurting yourself as well. All right. So this is what I mean. Keep everything clean, including um, your interactions, the naming of your interactions, like don't let Webflow just name it whatever when you duplicate. Um, take time to name it. This is image one on. This one is image one off. You know, uh, on, off, on, off. You make it super simple. All right. Uh, if you pack it all into one interaction, then how much more time would that take you? More stress would that take you? And I'm coming from a place where um, when I was the in-house web designer uh, at a huge company, and there's this term, I don't know if you're familiar with it, uh, some of you who do a lot of web development, you probably know this term, legacy issues. All that means is someone built something and then we're trying to modernize it, but there's all this old code that we have to freaking figure out in order to get this project done. Legacy issues. Ugh. So don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to your client and don't do that to um, uh, your future clients, contractors. You know, you help everyone across the way. All right. Um, web desire. Sorry for the distraction. You're all right. This is more scalable. Hey, I mean, we're all learning from each other. We're all learning from each other and you're not being a distraction. All right. Never think you're a distraction. We're all learning here. All right. Um, and let me give you a shout out to Webflow Jacob because I like your work. WRS. All right, and here's a real unedited photo of Jacob right here. Look at that. <laughs> Hello from Germany. Awesome. And you joined in 2018. Yeah, Webflow. That, what is this? And it's clonable? Wait, what? Hold the mouse down and move. What? Everyone, he, dude, oh, shout out to Jacob. Here, let me put you in the chat room. Yo, that's so cool. Oh, you did the Banksy thing. The <laughs> See, I love it when people experiment. And you let people clone it. Yeah, why am I? Oh, wait, I'm not on my regular account. Yeah, I'll follow you. Don't worry. Yeah, a lot of followers. Great job. Great job. There's more. There's more. There's more. You are crazy, sir. New Webflow Pro. What is this? What is this? My version of a pro Webflow for pro user, pro modus. I can't click it. Okay, so this is just, a, oh wait, you can, I'm confused. Oh, so Webflow kind of has this now. So you probably built this a while ago. Well, anyways, great job. And thank you for being here. Yeah, I, I watch the community. I <laughs> like there's people that I'm like, wow, they're so cool. How do you do that? And he lets people clone it. That's really cool. You're awesome. 
Um, yeah, so that's how to do the tutorial. That's how you do the thing. Um, oh yeah, we were going to go over how to make this a better UX. How to make this a better user experience. And who was asking? Someone was asking, uh, Ayush was asking, what if the mouse goes off screen? So watch what happens. I'm going to go off, just blank white, because nothing's being hovered on. So if you don't want it blank white, I mean, you can just set your wrapper, which is our hero, to like a background color. If you don't want it blank, blank white, you can do whatever you want with it. So we have that. And then I hover. My pleasure, Jacob. I'm a fan of you too. Yeah, so that's what happens. But it's uh, kind of jarring when this happens. No one knows um, what's going to happen. So how do you make this a better user experience? Um, oh, I know what we can do. We can have labels. Call it like project one, project two or something. Check it out. So I'm going to set this, uh, all the hover triggers to center um, uh, vertically and horizontally. I'm going to give it a, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's give each of these a background color of black, but it's like opaque. It's like 60, right? And that way we can give our type some color, like a color white, bold this, make it a, let's make this a big size, like um, 10 VW on the type size. And let's put text inside of it. Okay, 10 is large, it is too big, that's fine. I always start with 10. Okay, something like that. Let's give it some padding. I like 20. Project one. There we go. So go like that. Project like that. Just copy paste it everywhere. There you go. Project one, two, three, four. And so when I hover on this, the hover trigger, so I'm going to click on the down arrow on the hover state. Let's go ahead and set the opacity of this div block to zero. And let's go back to none state, and we're going to set a transition for the opacity for 200 milliseconds, which is default in that way. So it's like, oh, there's projects here. Eh? 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 So you kind of see that there's like hover spots. It's like, oh, okay, there's three projects and you can go like this. This kind of makes it look more cool. Huh? And as always, these projects, if you want to clone them or if there's like custom code and you want to have access to the code, you have to be a member of the Pixel Geek community and just ask it, uh, ask for a clone uh, from me there on the chat board and I will uh, transfer it to your Webflow account. All right. Brian, welcome back, Brian. Can it be set to display the last image hovered on when the cursor goes off screen. Mm. I think that would take custom code. Corey, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the stream. Better UX indeed. Now maybe make them focusable as well for keyboard only users. Ah, accessibility. All right, so for Brian's question, there has to be custom code because I feel like there ha is there a code to say, hey, if the mouse is no longer on the canvas, can you find where it last was? Where is the e where was the X and Y of the mouse before it left the canvas? Or or left or or like 
on mouse leave. So for the what I'm thinking about in Cosmic Code is for hero on mouse leave of the hero wrapper of the hero div. Where was the last X and Y of the mouse? Then do something with that data? Yeah, I would have to really dig deep for that one. That's a good question, though. Corey, better UX, focusable as well for keyboard. I, I honestly wouldn't know how to do that. There has to, isn't that like an ARIA? Uh, or, or tab index or hmm I'm interested now HTML tab index okay yeah so tab div index you can do click anywhere in this pane then try tabbing through the elements uh -uh. okay yeah Tab in, okay, can you do tab index in Webflow? I don't know, let's see here. I'm gonna set this to tab, I'm gonna go to the custom or the setting, element settings, and then custom attributes. Sometimes Webflow doesn't allow you to add some stuff. And so whenever I'm about to type stuff, I'm like, please, please because they reserve keywords, or uh, they reserve some attributes. Yay, you can do it. OK, cool. Tab index and computers always start at 0, not at 1. Save. Yeah, tab index, no space. OK, let's try it with this. Tab index 1. Tab index. Two. Tab index three. Uh, let's publish. I wonder. I wonder if this. I feel like this is not going to work. Now let me tell you why. Because I have it set to hover, but yet tab tab index just means focused. So if it doesn't work on this publish, I'm going to try and use this um, opacity zero on focus as well as hover. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna just click inside. So I've clicked inside. That means the computer knows I'm inside the, the browser. So I'm gonna press tab. Okay, so you can see it's focusing. Okay, the focusing is working, but the hover isn't. So let's try to add on focus, uh, on hover trigger, focused. We're going to set the opacity to zero. Let's publish and try it again. And if it doesn't work, then I'm out of ideas for now. So let's refresh. All right, so that works, but the interaction doesn't. Why? Because these interactions are looking for actual hovers. We don't have an interaction. Webflow doesn't have an interaction for focus that may be something that the team should work on for accessibility. Hmm. But for now, my thought is finding some jQuery to say like, um, I don't know, jQuery if element is focused. Isn't like, yeah, focus. Delegate? Yeah, some, some. I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but um, yeah, that's you know that's interesting.
but thank you, Corey, for for calling it out for accessibility. How to figure that out? Okay, well that was fun. Uh, yeah. So we have about fifty-five minutes left. If you have any questions about Webflow, about web design, about um, uh, about your career, you know, um, and you know any questions you have for me, let me know now. And if you want me to review your site, Pablo put it in the chat room already, but it's a link. Go to pxlgk.com slash review, and I'll review your site um, and give you my honest opinions. I don't hold back, but at the same time, I use it as a way to help you grow. Um, oh, thanks, Corey. Thank you. All right. So if you submitted one, let's go see if anyone submitted any any sites to review. Last time we had six, and I was like, "Whoo, it's a lot." Uh, but I don't mind. Again, I don't mind. Today we have three. Awesome. Okay, and again. I'm happy to keep going until 12 p.m. Pacific time. So first one up is Scott's. Oh, yay. Scott Citron's website. Let's go to it. I'm going to, Scott, I'm going to give you my honest review. I'm giving you my honest review, okay? Actually, before I show it, um, so Scott Citron, um, is one of my two students uh, who took on my my course. So I, I wanted to see if I could teach uh, Webflow for a whole week, 20 hours. That's uh, four hours a day. And I made up this whole curriculum and I spent three months planning it. And, um, and, and Scott and another Scott showed up. And I'm very, very appreciative of you both. And now I get to see one of my students' projects live. And, um, like, let's see. Let's see. So, Scott, thank you so much for, for taking the course and also for being in the live chat and showing off your work. So here we go. All right. So... This is his first Webflow site, all right? If it's not your first, Scott, uh, I know it's one of your first sites, but this is your own that you're starting um, to, uh, this is to help people learn Adobe. And he is also a, a teacher. So, yeah. So here we go, my honest opinion. So first of all, the layout clean. It's clean. The layout is clean. Oh, that okay. That's cool. You use sticky for that, All right? Oh, you added. Okay, that's cool. Wait, this one doesn't have it. I wonder why. So this first one doesn't have that interaction. But I love the interaction you did. And if you just clone this, even better. Like knowing how to clone and adding it into your site and styling it that's a lot too that's a good skill to have all right all right i'm gonna keep going okay so you have hover effects all right so i'm just doing a quick run through right now all right this opens up another page okay calendly i love calendly okay so clean now honest um suggestions on how you can up level this even more all right so first uh your nav there is a lot there's a lot going on here and the type is very tight and the gap in between each or the padding in um in each or margin whatever you're using um is very tight as well so if we zoom out and just look at it just looking at the nav 
it, it feels like there's a lot going on in your nav. Okay. Um, what's the width you're using here? For your nav wrapper, you're using max width 1100. Um, 1100, maybe take it even further, 1280. Maybe take it to 1280. Is that 1280? Come on, nav wrapper, 1280. This one. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay, you have another breakpoint. I would say, wait, there. Okay, yeah, like, spread it out more, all right? Um, and if you don't want to, another thing you can do, all right, okay, so another thing you can do is use drop downs. If there's, I feel like if there's a lot of links at the top, you need to start using drop downs. So using the drop down element inside of Webflow to encompass things that are the, to, to group things that are kind of the same. For example, um, let's see here. So I'm wondering what are the difference between clients and projects? Oh, okay, well, it's not a portfolio site. Um, let's see here, clients, friends. So clients and friends, I, 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 cause I'm wondering, can you group some of these? Huh, because there's a lot. And if you can't group these, then that's fine. Let's see here. Let me go to clients. Oh, okay, so it scrolls down. I think clients went the wrong way. I clicked on clients. And you have an ID. I'm looking for your ID. Clients list is your ID right here. So if I go here, this... Okay, so you have three of you. So th this one, this one, and the first one all go to the same ID. So you need to fix that. Uh, they're going to the wrong section. They're all going to how can I help. All right. And you may want to use the, uh, an ID name that's the same as the link name because how can I help is not listed up here, but clients is listed, all right? So the clients is here, but you're calling it clients list. So I would just, instead of ID of clients list, I would say clients, just call it clients. So that way, when people see the URL, it looks like this. It's more readable as a human you know, um, rather than client. I mean, you can do clients list. Yeah, it's more readable, but like let it match what you're doing up here. All right. Um, and if you give your nav more width, you can set those paddings even further to like 15 and 15. See, it's more spaced out, it feels better like that. Do 1280 pixel. Yeah, there you go. So that would make things more spaced out. Yeah, like that. All right. For your hero row, um, not sure if you want to do this, but again, it's up to you. Um, I would put your photo on the right and all of this on the left. And an easy way to do that is to just use Webflow's layout right here under add elements and just drag that hero. And there you go. Okay. So you have your photo of yourself here and then your information on the left. Also, is the sound only weird? 
Is everyone just hearing me on one channel? Yeah, Streamlabs is is broken for me right now. So sorry if the audio quality of the stream is bad. I'll fix it next time. Promise. How do I make it stereo? <laughs> Mike. Down mix to on. Does this work? Did that work? Down mix to on mono. I don't want mono though. I want stereo. I only see one. Is this better? I don't know if I'm fixing it. No, it's like flickering. I. I hear a bit of crackling and a fan. Oh. Does that help? All right. Keep going. All right. So I would do that on your hero row. Moving on. Love this. Perfect. Okay, cool. Moving on. Um, this is good. I like this. This. Um, there's a lot of colors happening. So I would strongly suggest just making all of these grayscale. Kind of like what Webflow does on their homepage. Or what a lot of SaaS companies do. Is they use one color for company logos. Because when you have all these different colors of um, logos, it gets very distracting. It's like so many colors are happening and it's like, ew, whoa, what's going on? Where as you keep them all one muted color, then you're calming all of them down, but you're not really messing around with the company's uh, brand, right? So I would push these all to like, yeah, see, you've done it for the United Nations right here. So United Nations is usually blue. So and Fisher Price is red. So go ahead and just make them all black or grayscale. Um, yeah. The setting fix. I don't know what setting you're talking about. But. The, oh, the mono setting. Okay, here, let me set it to mono. And if it doesn't work, then we're just moving on to just keep going. Wait, Mike. Okay, so that one probably worked, yeah? Hopefully? I don't know. <sighs> technical, technical stuff. Can someone just fix it for me? <laughs> I just want to stream. All right, so, yeah. Those are good. Um, what you can do for all of your uh, testimonials uh testimonial text yeah i would set the testimonial text to be instead of max with 80 percent. there's this cool new thing called ch which is character count i think or characters so i'm just gonna pick a random number 30 ch okay so uh, 34 I'd say 40 or 42. Oh, but that one now. Okay, try 28. Okay, 28 sucks. <laughs> 33? Mm. Yeah, okay. 33 max width of 33 CH on your text, uh, testimonial text. All right, 33 CH. Try it. All right. So it's more centered in, in rather than a full width of, of text. All right. Uh, how can I help? Uh, Brian says, I like the idea of the hero layout, and I would like to see a color picture of Scott. Uh, 
yeah, I guess Scott's photo, his headshot, um, is is blending too much with the background. So maybe a colored photo of you, Scott. But again, you know, this is just uh, suggestions. Um, I love how you did uh, scrolling interactions. Not hover, but scrolling. Nice. Here's my promise. And I like this right here. Good job. And then your FAQs, I already talked about this. And so this illustration of you, I feel like it, it comes out of nowhere because you have a real photo of you here and then you have a um, illustrated photo of you here. So, I mean, I would put another photo of you and I think what would really drive this home this section home is if you have a photo or if you have a photo of you teaching a class or if you're only doing remote sessions, it would be nice if you had like screenshots of you in Zoom or something like that of you teaching students or doing one on one. So you have multiple screenshots of you doing one on ones with um, other people. So it shows to me, it would show validity like, um, hey, I actually teach, you know. Um, and that is why when I did my website, I was looking for photos that actually drive home my story, you know? And so I, I was lucky enough to get this photo from the Webflow Sarasota meetup that I went to a long time ago. And then me at a universe at, at two universities teaching. And so it's, it's like, I'm legit. I'm actually. I really teach and to drive it even home, I have videos to prove it. And so if you have anything to, to prove that, um, it's not just, it's like a testimonial, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, this is real. Like I actually teach. So, um, showing that here in some way would really, would really drive home, um, your story rather than, um, just the illustration of you. All right. Quick sampling of my recent design work. Cool. Okay, so this really helps, you know? That, well, that, that seems very interesting. I wish, so I'm wanting to click on it to see the detail because this looks very detailed. And I wanna know why is it like, like are you using typography to make that, uh, that portrait or, like what is going on in there? I want to click it, but I can't. So, yeah. And lastly, this right here, uh, I, f I feel like this form could be smaller, like a max width, a max width of like 550 pixels with a margin of auto on both sides to center it. Yeah. So like that, I would do something like that. Actually, the whole thing. Contact form, div container. So just for this one, I would do a max with a 550 pixel, yeah. Or even uh, 580 pixel. Yeah. Ooh, that puts a break right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So 600. Yeah. So I would do a 600 max width on just this one. And you would be good. Cool. And lastly, for check my calendar, uh, I wouldn't go to another page. I would just use Calendly's pop-up window embed code since it's a one pager anyway because like right here if i didn't know to if i didn't know um that this went back to the home page i'd be like you're telling the user okay dead end where do i go now you know where do i go now if i don't want to schedule i'm gonna have to click back you want to kind of steer away people from having to click on the back button because it's the back button is like a you know escape hatch like hey i don't know where to go i just need to go back 
So I would just use the pop-up window that Calendly gives you. But either than that, good job on finishing this site and launching it. Um, I'm very proud of you and thank you for trusting in me to teach you uh, all the things I know about Webflow. So uh, thank you, thank you, Scott. And I hope this helps. And I would love to see you come back next stream and show me any improvements to it and um, or any other projects that you do. Because it's real again, it's really fun to see, see people grow and fly. All right, next one. This one is complete site. Re Whoa, okay. <laughs> we got even more things to review. All right. So who is next? Web is web desire next? Yeah. Jacob is next. All right. What are you, I know I'm not going to review it. I'm just going to just watch in awe. I know it's going to be good. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here we go. And we transform online shops into digital flagship stores. All right. Re he did a blur. And so he just did a blur, blur filter, opacity, and a transform Y movement. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it already. Custom mouse. Yep. I've seen that tutorial before. Ooh, it's pixelated. Your, your circle's pixelated. You might want to make that SVG instead of a PNG. I don't know if that's possible. And if you're using scale, no, that, yeah, that's a PNG. If it was like, yeah, that's a PNG, most definitely. Um, all right, let's look at your menu. Uh, oh, mm, ah, <laughs> mixed feelings right there. You you heard my honest mixed feelings just come out. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. How do I break down what just happened in my head? And the, 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 the noises that came out of my mouth. Um, things are happening here. And I know it took a lot of work just to do that. I mean, just look at this logo. It's starting from white and it's going to black. And I'm wondering how still in progress. Okay. Okay. Um, do you need that effect? Honestly, because I, I feel like I got confused because you have large type here and then you have large type here and they're competing against each other. And I don't know, I can it's just me. So you can just tell me to 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 shut it and um like okay, cool. But as I scroll down, I'm like I'm like, wait, why do you have a horizontal scroll? You know? And then I'm like, oh my god, you can scroll in this? That's so interesting and cool, but at the same time, I'm like, why? And to be very honest, from a user experience point of view, like, um, who's your demographics? Like, who are you trying to sell to right now? If you're trying to sell to businesses, um, what kind of businesses? Are they like modern hip business? Like, how old are your business owners that you're trying to go towards? Because if, you, if you're trying to talk to the demographics of like 30, 38 and older, I feel like this would be too crazy for them. But younger people, I don't know, for people who are like in 30 under 30, Forbes 30 under 30 or something like that, I don't know. I think they would understand this and get it immediately, you know? Um, like, cause there's no words that says menu here. 
but I know it's menu because I've seen lines all the time. And and this is another stretch. You're only using two lines instead of three. And people are more um, used to the number three when it comes to UI elements. Three dots for the kebab menu. Three lines for the hamburger menu. But now you're showing two. So this is very modern, artistic. So I'm just like, uh, and as far as the actual interaction goes, I know you put in a lot of work and it's, it's super nice and it, that was clean, but I'm just confused. All right. Um, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just confused. Um, because you only have four links. Why not show the four links up here? It's not going to distract from anything. And if you want that cool effect where, like, if you want, like, if you're doing the large type uh, stuff, why not, you know, do a, a click and it's a full screen menu that overlays on top of everything. And that way you have large type for your, for your menu. And again, if you're still getting clients... And, or if this is your client's site and that's the way they want it, then who am I to judge? If it makes them happy and they are getting clients because of it, and this type of design converts, then I have a lot to learn, which I do. So, okay, so that's just the hero row in my head. The, the, so these reviews take a long time. Okay. So, okay, cool. A very fast-paced um, video, background video element. Um, we have smooth scrolling happening here. Uh, we have on scroll up, on scroll down. Yep, yep. for the nav bar. Oh wow, the I feel like the smooth scrolling is a bit too much because it feels laggy. It. I feel like my computer's lagging, but again, that's just me. Maybe the kids like it. I'm getting old. And again, how old am I dot webflow dot io? I made this site because I forget. <laughs> so yeah, I'm getting old. So maybe this, maybe kids like this, uh, the smooth scrolling in. Okay. So I did not know I can click on that. I just clicked on it randomly. Um, there's no indicator to tell me that this is clickable. Oh, the indicator is the, this, oh, the indicator is a circle growing bigger. I didn't really get that. Can you make it where, like, if I hover over this, like the image scales, I think that would be a good indicator or even an arrow, like just show, overlay it with an arrow or something that points to the right. I don't, I don't know. I did not know you can click on these. Wait. How come this, wait. Oh, I really got confused there. I got confused. Um, I thought this award was attributed to this, to this project. And so I was like, okay, you have this one that didn't win an award. This one did. But then why do you have a, a random award here? Because see how it's grouped up here? And there is no line separating them. Uh, so I would put this award right here. Or even he, to the left of the text. Because the grouping of elements made me think... This had nothing to do with any anything on this row. So I was confused. I thought these two were attributed to this project and made me think, why isn't it centered? Like, why is this off center? So I was confused. Um, keep going down. That's cool. I like when people do that. Um, would be another cool thing I see people do with this type of design is they do a, a text stroke and no fill in the text. You can do that with CSS. Um, cool, the logos. Uh, Scott Citron, if you're still here, this is what I'm talking about. Just keep all the logos the same color. Um, cool. 
other than that, man, great job. Do you have another page I can look at? Yeah, it feels very laggy. I'm not a fan. I'm sorry. I'm not a fan of the scrolling or the mouse. And again, maybe I'm just old. Okay, I can see my mouse now. And see why I feel like it's laggy? It's because my mouse is already here and everything else is trying to catch up to it. But I think on the home page, you did a CSS to remove the mouse. So it felt weird. Okay, cool parallax. Yeah, see how you're doing, you're giving an award at the top right? I think I would have done that on the home page as well. Parallax, I'm guessing it's um, in, um, Webflow Collections. All right. Service. Love it, love it. Okay, so you're just using the same template. Oh, wait. Okay, watch out. Some of your text has some um, hidden characters. So you might want to double check your text. I love this treatment. This this right here, I don't know why it's getting me. It's very modern. I like it. All right, one more page. Contact. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, great job, Jacob. I know you put a lot of work into that. And I appreciate you for sharing it with us. Uh, hopefully th those tips help. And if it didn't, yeah, that's fine too. <laughs> I mean, it's just one person's opinion. One person in a, in a universe or on a world of many more. So... All right, it is time for Ali. Ali's website. Here we go. What do you have for us today, Ali? Okay, let me go to my chat. Okay, Ali. Pakistan Fine Dining. All right, so... When it comes to video, I feel like it needs to be super duper high quality, especially for food. If you're selling food, that food photography needs to be high quality. Now, I know when you upload a video to Webflow, Webflow compresses the heck out of that video. And so the quality is probably not what you'll like. So as a suggestion, there is a trick and maybe I'll go through it um, in a future stream. And if you want me to do it, put it to uh, pixelgeek.community slash ideas and submit it there. But uh, susanstroman.com, I did, I helped develop this website. The video isn't super clear, but what's cool, what I figured out is that this video is not a Webflow background video. It's actually an embed player of Vimeo. So you can use Vimeo as your background video. And Vimeo, you can upload however big of a video that you want, all right? And that means you can get some high quality stuff, including adding audio to it. So I know this isn't the highest quality video as an example, but it's, um, it's an option for you to embed Vimeo. So that may help with the food photography because I want to see the food. If this is um, Pakistani fine dining, you want to show off that food. You get some close-ups of that food and be like, yo, this food could be at your next event. You know? Um, all right, so moving on. Okay. So, okay, you got some hovers. Okay, cool. Uh, book us today. Okay. 
what so my mind is like what's the difference between book us today and get a quote so i'm gonna click get a quote all right all right we'll talk about that page later book us today okay oh this this is a phone number okay um i would change this label to say uh Call us. Instead of book us today, I would say call us to book us or something like that. Because, again, UI labels, iconography, button labels, they're all like road signs. And I've said this before. I'll say it again. If you're on a street, if you're on a road and then you're on the right, uh, you're on a certain side of the road and then that certain side of the road is is a mandatory turn turning road, right? You're, if you saw a sign that's coming at you as you're driving by and it says uh, turn, uh, incoming turn or this lane will turn, it's like, turn where? Left or right? Which way is it going to turn? And it doesn't tell you until the last second. And you're like, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me earlier? So the same thing here. Book us today. I'm like, am I going to a new page? Are you going to show me a pop-up? A Calendly pop-up? Are you going to show me an appointment, uh, um, a calendar? What's going to happen when I click it? And so when I clicked it, I did not know it's a phone number link. So the labels are very important. Call us today would make more sense than book us today all right and plus book us today sounds like hey if you um if you call us right now we can have all this food prepared for hundreds or even thousands of people ready by today ah, that's not possible that's not possible no one can cook that fast so um especially fine dining so I would definitely change this to call us today. All right, moving on. Uh, this is a slideshow? Okay, I did not know this was a slideshow because it wasn't moving. So um, the only way I knew it's a slideshow is because I've been using Webflow for a long time and these dots look like the UI for Webflow slide uh, slider component. So um, I would remove the slider. You don't need the slider here. No one's going to click on these buttons. No one's going to click on them. So remove, just leave the hero like it is, but not in a slider component. All right, moving on. Experience more below. Okay, cool. All right, so see there, food photography. Very important. Great job here. Okay, and view our menu book a consultation yeah see book a consultation and this is a phone number link I, again i call to book a consultation or request a call i don't know something like that and so this one is inquire right here and it's going to email so this one should say email to inquire like, you got to tell the people what they're about to do. You don't want people to click on something and go, oh, what just happened? Why did that happen? All right. Um, your spacing is very tight at the top and bottom of this section. Um, whereas this one has more space. So it's inconsistent spacing. I like what you did here. I like, ooh, okay, I like that. I like the circles. More spacing, the cons again, the spacing is inconsistent between this circle, the edge of this circle, the edge of this circle, and this line is not uh, from this, the left side of the type all the way to the line. Is This is smaller than this. So you wanna make them spaced out the same, okay? Those little details really matter. Uh, it's hard to read these, uh, this logo and this logo. So what I would do is make these all white logos. Okay, just just knock them out with white. 
even the chili pepper, right? Everything should just be white because it's hard. If it's hard to see these two, then that's, that's not fair to these two logos, whereas these are popping out. And yeah, so it's not fair. So make it make it all white. Uh, testimonials is a header, but then this is talking about this. So why is this word outside of the section here? So I would put this inside of this section, okay? Uh, by Norm, you're on the beach. Then why are you watching? Enjoy yourself. Get out of here. In fact, <laughs> in fact, like leave now. Like close the app. Enjoy the beach. All right. Anyways, bye, Norm. Um. Yeah. And this type is getting way too, it, it, I would do a black overlay on the background image because you can't really see the type. It's, the type is being um, eaten <laughs> by the food. <laughs> like it's hard to see the type. Oh, you just got here walking the dog. Okay, all right. Um, okay, yeah, nice. Nice, nice. So it's a photo gallery. And again, the type is hard to see. See, you're doing call us today right here. This makes sense. Uh, yeah, so I can't read this clearly with the photo behind it. So I would push back the photo even more. Push back meaning having some sort of black overlay on top of it. Okay, but thank you so much, Ali. Thank you so much. All right, I got to get through these faster. Okay, this is the first time I'm probably not going to get through them. Oh, no, where's the site reviews? There it goes. Okay, I got two more. Wait, they're both from Ayush. Okay, so that means, Ayush, if I don't get through it, uh, through both, then that's okay, right? Because you can bring the second one later. All right, Ayush. What do you got? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Mingolassi. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um. I thought it was a maze at first, but that's just the type. Okay. Um. Wow. It it's it's clean and noisy at the same time. But I'm very interested. All right, so moving on. The creative audit. Have your brand evaluated, recognize your creative challenges, and get actionable advice from team at Backdrop. Apply now. Okay, so you have a hover effect. If I click apply now, all right, still work in progress. Nothing happens. Nothing, there's no links anywhere. All right. Scrolling down. I feel like the boxes need to animate somehow. If you can do that with Lottie, that would make it really awesome instead of a static image. But again, that's just me. Uh, mm, I like that arrow. That's cool. Okay. Don't just hear it from us. Okay. Um, I would, um, eh. hold on. I would push this down. Yeah. I don't know. 35. Yeah, probably 35. Um, this quote, double quote sign, is too close to the name. So if I go here, it's like it's too close to this line. I would push it down like this so there's some space. Um, what I so as someone who's like, you know what, the Pixel Geek brand. I want to know how I can make, uh, I want to know how to up-level it. Like, how can I make 
my brand better? You know, what am I missing? I need that help. When I go to this, I see that you're a person or you're a team that wants to help. However, I want to see before and afters. Let me see the before and afters of OnePlus, Lancify, and Matt Over Marketing. Like, what did you do for them? I want to see the proof. I need, just like a portfolio site, show me the proof. Show me before and after. Show me results. Like, like, are they getting more conversions? Or is their PR better now? Like, people thought, oh, this brand sucks, to, oh my god, I can't live without this brand. Um, Alish, you're working on Lottie. Cool. Okay. Sweet. So that's what I'm, I'm, I'm feeling here. Like, I'm, I'm looking for proof. Also, and again, that's just me, I'm looking for humans. Uh, who are the humans behind this? And maybe that's going to be on this page. All right, but I feel like having a team photo or something would help. Like something like uh, if you had a team photo here, even just a small one that said, uh, let our team help you, bam. Let our team help you dined. Let our team help you find out what's missing. Or even let our team help your brand grow. I don't know, something like that, you know? And so you're, you're, you're putting your potential clients uh, in a way like, hey, we want to serve you, we want to help you, like that type of content, that type of copy. And then you show a photo of the team who wants to help. All right. Uh, can you click on the cube? Clicked. Don't touch this. Shit will happen. Let me click it first before. Because I got to keep this safe for work. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, that's cool. But I mean it's a uh, it changes from light to dark mode. That's cool. But <laughs> that kind of scared me. So if it scares me, what do you think other people <laughs> so yeah. Well, I guess other people would click it if they're not on a stream. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, and we have time. So before I go into Ayush's other project, and thank you again, Ayush. Um, any other questions for me? When it comes to web flow, web design, career, life, I guess. I guess. Mm. Mm -mm. Let me wait on chat. All right, if there's nothing, Ayush's other project, a tree. Dot AI, okay, a tree, all right. Interoperability. What does that mean? <laughs> advice for teen freelancer. Okay, what advice do you want as a teen freelancer? And let me Google search. Exchange and make use of information. Oh, oh okay. Um. Okay. Uh, Ayush is asking, how do you position yourself as an expert? You don't. <laughs> Being an expert just means that you've been in the game for a while that you're like, I kind of know what I'm doing. 
Because remember, no one in life knows what they're doing. If someone says, oh yeah, I got to figure it out. I know what I'm doing. They are lying. They're straight up lying. No one, again, goes back to the first thing I talked about. No one's perfect. No one is an expert. People are just, uh, I guess the expert, if you're thinking about the word expert as like one of the best people to use a tool or one of the best people in a field, expert just means they've been in the game for a while and they've 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 done so much work that it's like okay like i get it like being jaded you know so don't position yourself as an expert position yourself as someone who genuinely wants to help that's it i know on my own website i put webflow expert seo purposes but I would more, I would just, what I usually say is I'm just a Webflow nerd. I saw it when in 2013 and it's been a hobby ever since. And I'm using it as a way to help people bring their designs and ideas to life. That's it. And I use this stream and my YouTube channel and my personal brand as a way to help others do the same and be happy about it. So yeah, I'm not an expert. I'm a nerd, but, uh, I'm just in the game for a long time. So, and if you're thinking about the word professional, I always thought about that word too. When I was a teen, I was like, I want to be a professional. Yeah. And then I learned, Oh, professional is just someone who just get paid to do something. So like, if you think about it, if you're a kid and you're selling lemonade on the side of the street, and someone buys that lemonade from you, you're a professional lemonade seller. <laughs> For 50 cents too, yeah. Or is it a dollar now because of inflation? I don't know. You are an expert because you show your expertise. Oh, yeah. I guess you can say it that, like that. I don't know. <laughs> it's just my own head. My own head, how I think. Like, yeah, experts. Like, I, I don't believe in experts. I don't believe in experts. I believe in humans. Yeah, so there's a deep answer for you. Uh, your second... Oh, we only have two minutes. Okay, so I like this. I like the round and round. That's cool. Um, yep, I was expecting a hover. This is very clean. Oh, this is clean. Is this... It's so clean, I feel like you're using a template. And that's not a bad thing. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm saying this is this is clean. I mean, look how much space you have around all of your sections. It's consistent. Your hover effect is is subtle. Um these tag yeah, this, this circle right here? Yeah. Okay, come on. This is all good. And then these waves? Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's in your work and your attitude. Okay, yeah, there you go. I am an expert. I think. <laughs> That's me. All right, let's go to another page. Yeah, clean, clean icons. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about this one. This one works. Wait, why is this blurred out? Hmm. Hmm. And it's happening on each one. All right, we're well, moving on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, cool. I like this. I was like, oh, I wish that would move, and it's moving. The, the nice sight. Okay, okay. Eush. Yeah. Nelson, you do believe in Webflow experts. Yeah, there's Webflow experts, but again, it's all about the personal brand. Uh, let me get into that, Christopher. Hold on. Um, but let me finish this one up. So, Ayush, thank you for showing us this. I know I didn't give this enough time, but I mean, it's really, really clean. Uh, so thank you. 
Thank you for uh, sharing that with us. Let me set this as complete and we are done, right? No other sites to review? Yay, we're done. Okay, uh, so I'll just end this with Christopher's um, comment. Yes, I do believe in Webflow experts. However, when someone calls themselves an expert, I'm still like, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Because again, anyone can call themselves an expert. Anyone with one day, one week, one month, or even a year of Webflow knowledge can call himself an expert, right? So labels, I don't care about labels. I don't care who you are when you're labeling yourself. What I care about is how are you helping others? And what I mean by that is how, when it comes to web, de web design and Webflow, how are you structuring your elements? How are, how are you naming your classes? How are you naming your interactions? How are you teaching people? How are you helping others to up level? So when I think if, if you want to use experts as a label, then Rand Segal is a is an expert. Um Mackenzie Child, um Waldo, Ben, the people I've met from the Webflow community, the OG people, uh, uh Bartosh. Uh, Andrew Nelson um, and 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 so many Charlie Marie is doing uh, uh, live streams. Ben Burns from the Future is doing live streams. So to me, those are the experts. Timothy Ricks, huge. He made uh, he hit ten thousand subs on his YouTube channel. He deserves that. He's an expert. Um, so when I see a list of experts, I'm like, cool, dude, cool. But when I see people who are genuinely helping because they want to help people, that's a human. I don't care about experts. I care about the humans. And that's why I'm trying to help everyone here in the Pixel Geek community become humans. And if you already are one, thank you. Thank you for being that human who cares not only for the no-code community, but also for the client's well-being so that they can maintain their sites in seconds to minutes rather than hours to days and helping them gain and convert clients faster because they you have took the time to save your client's time. And that's what I do with all of my clients. I make sure that they don't even, if a client is emailing me saying, hey, Nelson, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to maintain my site. I have done my job wrong. I don't want those emails. I, and again, I don't charge my clients for like maintenance fees, like monthly maintenance fees. No, I transfer the whole site to their account. And I'm like, hey, you set up your own Webflow account and you pay for the site plan on your own account. I'll just help you set it up and done deal. You only call me when you need a redesign or you need a complete new landing page or something. But for small things, I'm not going to charge you because you should know how to do it. I don't want you emailing me because a client emailing me means they have to take time to send the email. Then they have to take even more time to wait for me to respond. I have to take time to respond and I have to wait for them to respond back. And for what? That means I don't care. I just want that money. So... And again, this is just my opinion. Take care of your clients. Take care of the other people, the humans around you. All right? So that's it. Wow. That was a... Whew. That was a soapbox. Um, where's my music? Is my mu Has the music been playing this whole time? Wait, no, it hasn't. Wait. Play. Okay. Because OBS doesn't. There we go. All right, cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone who's been on this stream for supporting this channel, supporting me. Uh, it really means a lot. I appreciate you all. There was this one tweet, last thing. There's this one tweet that said, try changing the way, uh, when you say, I appreciate this or I appreciate it, try changing it to say, I appreciate you and i've been doing that more often and it feels better you know it, it's more personal 
So I appreciate you all for being here. I will see you next time. Uh, what's happening? Let me check my calendar. I think next week, no stream because... Let me see here. Yeah, next week, no stream. The monthly Pixel Geek member group session is happening. So if you want to be a member, go to pixelgeek.community, join up, and I will see you on Google Meet. And we can just chat, vent, or talk about whatever, all right? Um, and then the week after that, we're doing another stream. So the 26th, um, that one's tentative, FYI. I got to double check on the 26th. And if not the 26th, July 3rd, I'll be back. So thank you all so much. Again, this is the Pixel Geek live stream. I'm your host, Nelson. These streams happen every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time, where we talk about mostly web flow and no code stuff. Uh, yeah, and that's it. So I'll see you. And as always, make the web beautiful together. See ya. <laughs>